Manchester United in final agony. Pochettino in talks to return to Spurs. Dortmund want Chelsea youngsters. Donnarumma set to leave AC Milan and a transfer roundup all coming up in the next few minutes. As I'm your host, Matt Froelich, you are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. first off, not exactly the greatest end to the season for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Manchester United. After deeming the recent season not a success because they have not failed to pick up a trophy, it leaves you wondering what's going to happen this summer at Manchester United because quite a few things definitely need to be done about their squad. Having said that, you would have expected that they would have been able to beat Villarreal in the Europa League final last night. Not only because Manchester United have probably a better squad worth of players. They've also got a bigger wage budget. They're overall a better team on paper. Having said that, no disrespect to Villarreal at all because they played the game perfectly. It was the complete underdog story. Like I mentioned, with United favourites, Villarreal underdogs, what they'd want to do is control the match as best they can, not let it get out of hand, definitely not let Manchester United counter on them with all their speed and the quality in their attack, and maybe nick a goal here and there. And it's exactly what Villarreal did. They managed to take the lead, and then once United had equalised, didn't let it slip out of their hands. And in fact, it wasn't exactly the greatest game overall. It went down to the luck of the draw at penalties, which was... Honestly, I was sitting there watching it. It was insane. It was one of the craziest penalty shootouts I've seen. Not only because it went to the goalkeepers, not only because 21 penalties were scored in a row before David De Gea missed, but also the quality of the penalties was amazing. Some ridiculous calmness, some coolness, some composure, considering you're in the final of a European competition. Anyway, hats off to Villarreal because honestly, I saw a lot of media before the game, a lot of fans writing them off saying United are easily going to rule this one. I thought United were going to win purely because I was just analysing their run to the final and the quality they've got in their squad. But again, massive props to Unai Emery who has now mastered a fourth Europa League trophy. He is the most successful manager in Europa League history now, which is pretty amazing. Just a shame for Arsenal fans, he couldn't quite do it with them. Anyway, like I mentioned before, what it means to Olegana Solskjaer and United in the summer, they definitely need a few changes, and certainly I think one of those may come at centre-back. I wasn't completely convinced by the Bailly Lindelof partnership at the back, and it's clear that they miss Harry Maguire. You cannot, like we saw with Liverpool, have one defender get injured, and then all of a sudden your back four falls apart. And it's not quite good enough. As for the decision to play Pogba and McTominay, McTominay was brilliant, not overly sure about Pogba's role in the match. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer overall just left it too late. Like I said before with Emery and Villarreal, they had a brilliant plan. He made the substitutes when he needed, he freshened things up when he could, and when it came down to the luck of the penalty shootout, they kept their cool. Big shout out to Geronimo Ruri as well in the Villarreal goal. But moving on to that and some other massive news news from yesterday and it looks like the managerial roundabout is in full swing. So earlier on in the day we had Antonio Conte leaving Inter Milan, agreeing to a 7 million euro payoff and after just two seasons with the club he is gone because they are willing to sell loads of talent to raise some money this summer. As for Antonio Conte's next move, we're not quite sure where he's going to go. There were rumours of Tottenham putting a ridiculous amount of money on the table for him, but I'm not quite sure that one's true. Later on in the evening, literally after the Europa League final had finished, Zinedine Zidane announced that he would be leaving Real Madrid. And now, this leaves a rather interesting opportunity, because both Juventus, who by the way, are still with Andrea Perlo, haven't made a final decision yet, and Inter Milan, after letting go of Antonio Conte yesterday, have offered a contract to Max Allegri, and he was one of the ones that I thought would be in line for the Real Madrid job should Zinedine Zidane go. But now, because of that, I'm starting to think that if Allegri goes to Inter, it would then mean that Conte could potentially go to Real Madrid. And Zinedine Zidane, well, he could go, maybe, just maybe, I'm trying to put this together all in real time, to PSG, because their manager, Mauricio Pochettino, is, according to the last few hours or so, in talks with a stunning return to Tottenham Hotspur. Daniel Levy fired the coach back in 2019, and since then, he hasn't quite settled in France's taking over in January. He has managed to win them two trophies, but they didn't win the Champions League, and they lost out to Liga to Lille, meaning it is the second time in the last decade which they didn't take home the French League. Because of all of this and because of Maurizio Pochettino's affiliation with Spurs and his love for the club, he is willing to move back, but there's going to be some serious talks to be had. Of course, at the moment, this is just rumours, but it looks like from some rather reputable sources, including The Athletic, that talks between the two are definitely underway and that quite a few Spurs players are rather excited at the thought of their former boss coming back to the club. And speaking of Antonio Conte, I did a video, which you can find here, a few weeks back, talking about how he completely destroyed Juventus' dominance this season 
and took Inter Milan to the Serie A title. Next up though, and to some transfer news, and there is rumoured to be more talks between Callum Hudson-Odoi and moving to Germany, but this time, unlike a few years ago, it's not to Bayern Munich, it's to Borussia Dortmund. Of course, Dortmund have a fantastic track record of developing young potential English talent, and Callum Hudson-Odoi alongside Tammy Abraham, who's also part of the discussions, haven't exactly found game time easy to come by at Chelsea in the last few months. Since Thomas Tuchel took over, it's literally been the end of Tammy Abraham's career at Chelsea, and Callum Hudson-Odoi has never really managed to work his way fully into the first team. Maybe something to do with the fact that Tuchel tends to play wing-backs, or maybe just the fact that Hudson-Odoi hasn't necessarily come along as many people thought that he would. Like I mentioned, I remember a few years ago when he was linked with Bayern Munich. In fact, Chelsea turned down so many bids from Bayern for around £30 million for the 18-year-old at the time, they offered him a new deal over €100,000 per week. Sorry, £100,000 per week, which was an insane amount of money, but you would assume that he'd go on to be a top player. A few years later, it hasn't quite happened for one or two reasons. And I actually think going to Dortmund, when you look at what Sancho and Bellingham have done there, it would actually make a lot of sense. It would make even more sense if Dortmund were to sell Jadon Sancho this summer and then bring in Callum Hudson-Odoi, a similar player in a similar position, but just on a cheaper value. As for the sense of bringing in Tammy Abraham, maybe as a Haaland replacement, but I think Sancho's got more chance of leaving this summer than Haaland does. And next up then, we're talking about a very, very big transfer. And we've spoken about some of the players that are available on free transfers this summer, and it looks like Barcelona are snapping most of them up, including Aguero, Wijnaldum, and Memphis Depay, along with Eric Garcia too. But the next one is Gigi Donnarumma. This is unbelievable. 22 years old, with over 200 appearances in six years in the first team at AC Milan. One of the best, if not the best, young goalkeepers in Europe. And he's available on a free transfer. Paolo Maldini speaking yesterday said that the club would be sad to see him go and their paths go off in different directions, but they have to accept it at some stage and they can't plan out everyone's career for them. Gigi Donnarumma is, of course, represented by Mino Raiola, which means that now clubs don't have to deal with a ridiculous transfer fee, but they're still going to have to deal with a lot of agent fees and a crazy new contract for Donnarumma. As to where he's going to go, most top teams in Europe who would be looking to bring in Donnarumma actually already have a pretty good goalkeeper. I'll try and go through them all of them now. Edison at City, he's not going there. Allison at Liverpool, no, he's not going to overtake him. Mendy at Chelsea, I doubt it, although that that, that kind of is a Chelsea thing to do to bring in Donnarumma. Um, Courtois has been brilliant for Real Madrid. Uh, to Stegen's fantastic at Barcelona. Neuer's brilliant at Bayern Munich. Kayla Navas has done very well at PSG. I'm trying to think of all the other goalkeepers. There's probably a few more. The only one I can think of is maybe, just maybe, with Gigi Buffon leaving Juventus, which Chesney not necessarily always being their number one, although that's maybe because Buffon had it in his contract that he needed to play a few more games. Maybe Juve could be tempted. Maybe Juventus could be tempted to bring a Donnarumma on a free. As I just mentioned, there are plenty of top goalkeepers at top clubs, so I'm not ideally sure where he's going to end up. But anyone who does get him, as I say, at 22 years old, could pretty much say they've got their goalkeeper spot covered for the next 10, even 15 years. Finally, then we come to a quick run-up of the rest of today's daily news. And talking of Gigi Buffon, his next destination could be Benfica. If reports are to be believed where the 43-year-old could sign a one-year deal after his Juve contract expires in the summer. Elsewhere, and Leicester are this close to completing a deal for Lille's Bobakari Sumare for around £80 million. And if they do, it looks like Liverpool may see this as their chance to go ahead and make a move for Leicester midfielder Yuri Tielemans. And lastly but not least, P. PSV are interested in bringing back Luke de Jong from Sevilla. That's all from me here today. Make sure you let me know your thoughts below. Check out everything else you've got going on. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.